maybe a compression test and maybe a shear test. That's the two column test. If I was coming into an area I didn't know much about, I'd make it a little bit longer so I could get maybe two compression tests and, and two shear tests, or maybe three of each. It just depends what I'm looking for. Um, the corner that I plan to work in is going to be in the shade. So if the sun had been out here as we arrived, neither corner's in the shade. So you tell yourself which way is the sun going? It's going that way. Choose this corner. By the time you've dug it out, it'll be in the shade. You want to make this quarter as near vertical as you can get it. So you'll soon pick out all the builders on this job because it will be plumb vertical both sides. Don't uh, bother to do anything more than about here and about there, nice and neat. Okay? So when I'm doing these shovels into the corners here, I don't want a whole lot of shovel marks in it. No. So when I'm planning to dig the corner out and trim it up, I'll always do the vertical cuts first and then I'll do these because then it runs into the vertical stop uh, and stops and I'll chuck it out and there won't be a mark. If you slam in like this, you'll end up with a wall that's covered with slots which you don't know whether they're layers or whether they're the blade of your shovel. So don't expose anything more than this because the rest of it, the sun is going to hammer it while we're busy talking and, and working and we will trim it up when we need it. Yep. So don't worry about that. Sometimes this side I don't even dig out all the way. I just dig down here, leave that, leave this, and then when I need it, then I'll dig down and then I'll trim it and I'll cut my column out and my column's clean, neat, ready to go. Rather than prepare all the columns, do stuff here and come back and the columns look like leaning tower pizza. Alright, while this has been going on, so as soon as I got here with my probe and figured out where I was going to do it, you need to uh, get an air temps at 1.5 in the air. So if you've got skis, they're pretty useful for this. Pop it in, it's, it's 1.5 to there, near as god damn it. Hang something off the top, in this case I've got the cord from my, um, my temperature, digital temperature thing, and I've just clove hitched it on the top. The tip of this is what reads, and it's the same with your dial stem ones. The tip has to be off the ski or you get a false reading, and in the shade. Good thing about digital thermometers is that you can sort of read them real easy, even if they're 1.5 up there. I suggest for you, while you're on this course, if you've got skis or a board that you can stick in the snow, you get a bit of tape and you make something up there that you can just reach up, drop your dial stem in, and it sits right there in the shade with the tip shaded but not touching. You also need one on the surface, so there's a shadow here, so I would put it, my surface one on there. This is happening while um, I'm digging the hole, and it certainly doesn't take long. This thing recycles once every second, so within four or five seconds it's settled down, it's reading the same numbers. So I need to be able to see that. But not tall enough. Andrew, jump in there. We'll walk around below my pack and, and read what the number is on there. Be careful that not to pull on it or the whole thing will fall off. Minus 4.2. Okay, so air temps minus 4.2. That's a bit cooler than you might think it's up here in springtime, wouldn't you? Right, pass me a book and I'll show you where all this starts to go down. This should be the first of your snow profiles. Yes, it is. Uh, air temp here minus 4.2. A lot of our air temps are positive, and when they are, you would put 0 0.2. That would mean 0.2 above zero. We don't use a plus sign and we always prefix a digital a decimal with a zero. So when I hear two, I, I know that it's two. When I hear 0 0.2, I know that it's a decimal two. Good on that?